Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Welcome back. Yeah, and uh, this is what happens a lot of times when we go to... I'm, I'm making one or two videos, and all of a sudden something comes up and takes precedence, and I think it's very important to cover some things. But we want to thank our Patreons. We couldn't do it without you guys. Again, all the videos go up on Patreon, and there's unique videos over there. Uh, typically two, sometimes three times a week. And try to be consistent with it. Usually at once one around the weekend <clears throat> and then run one around the middle of the week. And if something else comes up and feels really uh, inspiring, we will share that as well over there. Uh, just to show thanks for those that are supporting our endeavors. And again, you can join the family over there for as little as a dollar a month. And even less if you pay in advance for a year. There's a 10% discount. Comes down to 2.8 cents a day, I believe. It's, it's, it's just a little bit, but it's very, very appreciated. Absolutely. And while, while the system's in place, we need to do this in order to pay the bills, so to speak. And keep your eyes to the skies. Yes, we, we will be talking about more ongoings with the eclipse. But we have another event that's going to come, too. You, can't, you cannot make this up. This is such a momentous time. And this is why... For years, we've been sharing that our skies are loaded with beings from other places. They're all watching the show here because it is a big show that's happening on planet Earth and other planets, too. Explosive star events going to create a once-in-a-lifetime sight in the sky. What? Yes. Explosive star event? Yes. Here's how to see it. And this is actually all over the place. This is buzzing, too. Astronomers are expecting a new star to appear in the night sky anytime between now and September. And it promises to be a once in a lifetime celestial sight. Uh, no, it won't be once in a lifetime, but it'll be the first that we remember. Uh, and in and, and reality, this is part of something much, much bigger. The expected brightening event, known as a nova, is going to occur in the Milky Way's Corona Borealis, or the Northern Crown Co Constellation, which is located between the Boots and Hercules constellations, while a supernova <clears throat> is the explosive death of a massive star. A nova refers to the sudden brief explosion from a collapsed star known as a white dwarf. Again, this is the system giving us the system's explanation. T. Coronae Borealis, otherwise known as the Blaze Star, is a binary system in the Corona Borealis <clears throat> that includes a white, a dead, what they say is dead, white dwarf star and an aging red giant star. Red giants form when stars have exhausted their supply of hydrogen for nuclear fusion and begin to die again. This is all the concepts of the control system. In about five or six billion years, their timelines again, our sun will become a red giant puffing up and expanding as it releases layers of material and likely evaporate in the solar system's inner planets. Although Earth's fate remains unclear, oh, trust in the uh, Anunnaki and the Draco, they're going to probably tell you. Yeah, every 79 years or so, T. Coronae Borealis experiences explosive event. The stars in the orbiting pair are close enough to each other that they interact violently. The red giant becomes increasingly unstable over time as it heats up, casting off its outer layers. Ah, and they land and as matter on the white dwarf. The exchange causes the atmosphere of the white dwarf to gradually heat until it experiences a runaway thermonuclear reaction resulting in the nova, as seen in the animation below, according to the Space Energy uh, Agency. So, T. Coronae Borealis last experienced an explosive outburst in 46. Astronomers are keeping a watchful eye on the star system once more. This is one of the 10 recurring novae in the galaxy. We know the last eruption back in 46. The star will get dimmer for just over a year before rapidly increasing in brightness. And it started to dim March of last year, so researchers are expecting it to go nova between now and September, but uncertain when it will happen. Um, one thing that David Debine, ADAPT2030, um, and, and uh, we had discussed in the past was 
this concept called the galactic super wave. And um, <clears throat> this is something that I think my first, uh, my first brushing into this really came from uh, the works of Peter Dunov, who is one of our guides, and, and Cindy's been able to keep contact with him. And uh, ever since we did videos on him, he started to show up because consciousness is all interlinked. It's all interlinked. And if, if we are thinking the world is, uh, you know, such that they, the church gave us back in medieval times, which we are still under medieval times, even the science they give us is medieval, we're, we're sorely wrong. All consciousness is connected. You know, Carl Jung talked about how our consciousness at a subconscious level is all interconnected, one part of an ocean. That is true. It's all explained in the Eastern texts. Um, and I'm reading <clears throat> multiple books at one time right now, uh, <laughs> which is something I always do. And, and it's fascinating uh, what's right out there in the open, but most people aren't, don't realize it. And it's it's not even really hidden because, you know, there's, there's probably millions of books in print, certainly millions of books in print that, that share a lot of the true mysteries or what we would take to be mysteries of the universe. But it's all right out there for us. It really is. All you got to do is a little digging. And, you know, again, the system wants you digging in places where it's not going to turn up anything substantial. This event is is what we got from the guides and what Cindy uh, is going to share is part of the change. This is the change of a yuga. This is the change in human consciousness. All this is, is it's all about light. Light is information. And uh, again, as we've explained, like the whole concept of, of Lucifer is, is, is totally a mistranslation, misunderstanding. When we, when we look... Because, you know, the system fears light. And, and, and we don't view Lucifer as a being at all. But yes, there, there is a satanic system in place. Many, many demonic uh, en entities out there. This is the spot where the, the constellation uh, is going to have the Nova. Look what over is over to the left. This is humanity's home territory. Lyra, Vega. Th this is where we humans uh, come from uh, one of the places but perhaps this is the origin point as far as we know going as far back as we can see so you know again this is kind of a message from home in so many ways as humanity is rounding the corner we've been led astray led into the dark and now we're rounding the corner we can see little bits of light and of course what does the system do well, I mean, the very term Lucifer is light bringer. They, they want you afraid of the light. They want you staying in the darkness with them because they're stuck in the darkness. And, and they cannot leave the darkness. They've traded uh, their source spark for temporary control and, and power and fame and greed and lust and all those things that were warned against. Uh, in in all the traditions around the world, well, they've they've traded it all the way, you know, for this, and they're not they're not going to see the light of home. They fear the light, just like vampires fear the light. They fear uh, because again, light is information; it's energy, and it's all triggering our DNA that the control system has turned off, which is being turned on rapidly. There is rapid expansion in human consciousness underway right now. Not in everybody, because some people have decided to do um, certain things and continue to do certain things which are slowing uh, the progress. Uh, yet, at the same time, those that maybe even made a bad decision, but their souls are a little bit more advanced through many different lifetimes, or they are star seeds, literally. And they've had incarnations in other places, like in the Lyran, or maybe in the Syrian, or maybe in the Pleiadian star systems, uh, you know that those bad mistakes that they've made regarding the system and what the system tries to bully you into doing aren't really going to matter because their light is strong enough to burn that stuff away. And also, we got a long time ago when the first uh, first waves, the first of, of information was coming out about the plague upon the land that. 
we have help in the higher densities that for the star seeds light workers even though certain things are going into their physical bodies they are being drained off on the higher levels by uh, very high density fifth density sixth density beings they are helping the star seeds and the light workers that are here to change the paradigm and just shift it from darkness because this is you know uh, this is the kali yuga and i see those comments oh you must be one of those new agers it's like what you're really happy with the kali yuga you want to stay in this condition forever hello is there anything inside there i don't know sometimes i really don't know if there's anything left inside there no gray matter left no intuition left is really what we're talking about because they've crushed the ability of the third eye the pineal gland to function at all with all the toxins so yeah you know most uh, unfortunately a, a big huge chunk of the world is still basically searching w around blindfolded with earplugs in and 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 just can't get it but i think about 20 to 30 percent of the population we've gotten as much as a third are not from here they're not from here and this is why you have those people that just this is all they know this you just know it you don't have to even you can't maybe even explain it but you just know it and you also knew that you could never believe uh the lies of the system the distortions of the system so what is this this brightest nova of a generation cosmic explosion this is a sign of the galactic superwave. This is absolutely what it is. And consciousness is going to change. And now, again, they want us to be in fear of the galactic superwave. But there should be no fear of this. Because this will change us in an instant. And this is where we just have to let go of everything that's of the system in us. So while we don't see the earth fried and and obliterated and we've remote view 2050 ish and 2100 ish in fact the earth is healthier than ever that we see um there is a separation coming and that separation uh you know is something that's gonna be happening in waves and the galactic super wave is a part of that and this is peter dunov and he saw that and we've done numerous videos on him in fact, I just punched in Superwave, and you could see this has been ongoing three years ago, one year ago, three years ago, three years ago. I mean, I, I have a very, very strong um, connection to this and, and to, to Peter. I feel it very strongly, um, and I know Cindy does too. This is, this is the look up, you know, because, you know, things are going to change. This is why they are rushing because they know the timeline they only have a certain timeline and you know we feel that the intensity of this wave coming in is going to be about 20 mid 2040s um, and consciousness is going to shift i don't think we're all going to be swamped in two mile high waves i think that's the system trying to put fear into you the system wants you to view everything good with terror they want you to think you're either going to burn to a crisp because the sun's going to nova or two mile high waves are going to pound you to oblivion. But work on the spiritual side, shed all that that you need to shed. And in the blink of an eye, you will be changed forever and you will become something so much more than most believe possible. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people um, can definitely... Maybe understand that it's it's not about losing anything. It's not about losing anything in the three D. It's about gaining an understanding that's going to help you see in different dimensions, uh, multi dimensional, and and have an understanding of that. I remember the the first times when I was starting to see. And I watched myself go into a bad mood and I also watched an entity come and feed off of that energy. It it was so eye opening to me. It's like, oh my gosh, I have got to change my ways because I don't want to feed these things. I do not want to feed these things. I don't want to have them <laughs> a feeding frenzy on me. It, it just really, really weirded me out. But that was one of the first things that helped me want to make myself different, make myself better. 
but people have to see this for themselves and this is one of those opportunities where these waves come through and people are going to be able to see interdimensionally and and please keep in mind it's not about what you are going to lose it's about gaining what what you're going to gain the wisdom the knowledge the ability to see into different dimensions the ability to see past the veil of the matrix that they put up and you know they do a very good job at holding that uh, matrix in place and making people believe that it is the one real thing when it's not there's so much more going on around you than than you could ever imagine when one decides to go on a spiritual journey and and, and wake up and understand who they are there's a lot more out there for us and what this wave is going to do is it's going to assist that it's going to help that when the light of information comes it can be quite overwhelming um, because our bodies are made to only perceive a, a certain way but when information comes it comes in all different directions all different way, ways and it's instant so it takes a while to unpack and this is why we talk about the spiritual practice mind body breath this is what we call integration. It's a very important uh, aspect of spirituality and awakening. And this is definitely, absolutely not something to fear. It's something to gain. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll, I'll have the links for this article. You could still find articles about it. It's interesting that Peter Dunov is the one that, he he really is the one that that coined the galactic superwave uh, theory because he spoke of this before it was ever conceived of in a um, scientific way, and it's going to change the consciousness and it's going to really split our world. So when I pick this picture, this is why I pick this picture because in 2055, for instance, when Cindy was channeling the kids of 2055 that are living in a natural way uh, with the earth they know they could see the people in the smart cities um, <clears throat> there's just the earth is not the same uh, there's people in smart cities that are totally in the system uh, they are being guarded by the giants which came about 2035 to openly take control of the the smart cities but out in out in nature, people are living absolutely free. They're literally interacting with extraterrestrials openly. They're able to do things that we're typically not able to do today. They can sit down, meditate, and push their consciousness off the earth plane at, <clears throat> at will, just an average person, and go to other places. This is what um, we, in the type of abilities that we do have in the other ages that are relegated in the dark age to just really uh, very advanced monks and yogis for the most part, very gifted spiritual beings. But this is going to be commonplace. What Cindy does is, is going to be commonplace in a silver or a golden age. And you know more and more of the percentage of people will have these abilities as we move deeper into the Bronze Age and will also live much longer. Like the, ch the children from 2055 said the people in the cities live very short lives, you know, compared to the children who are living in, in our estimation, hundreds of years, if not already starting to get close to lives that are like a thousand years long. Once we're outside of the system and the galactic uh, superwave will will change all that. And, and there are many stars that are exhibiting uh, changes and and many channels have covered this and and there's there is other information out there for you guys if you search on this I first became aware of this really back in the 80s but didn't fully understand uh, the concept um, of what's going on until Cindy was able to ch channel Peter more so it's a change in consciousness it, it really is not like the movie knowing where we're all going to burn to a crisp it's not like the movie 2012 where you know the the waves are going to crash over the himalayas this is where we differentiate with um you know douglas vote and 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 ben davidson and others you know, if you are focusing on the spiritual side of things 
Yeah, then you'll be guided. You're just going to simply be guided to the right place at the right time. And, and that's what we have to prioritize. That is our priority. It absolutely is. Um, and so you know, we would strongly urge everybody else to develop a mind-body-breath practice, whatever you resonate with, whether it's yoga, qigong, uh, you know, pranayama. Again, there's so many different labels we can use for the same thing. And that's the beauty, too, of, of the times uh, that we're heading into. We'll no longer need labels. One of the things that we forget when we, when we pass on and, and leave the body is our name because there's no more need. And, and this is something that, that Cindy has spoken about numerous times. Well, you know, names are really good. They help us identify. And we do need uh, labels for, for this world right now. They're very, very helpful in describing what someone might be going through. They're very helpful when we're talking about something and we really want someone to understand. We pull out our labels. So they do have purpose. I, I see a lot of people really dogging, you know, labels. But they, they definitely have a purpose. But that was one of the things that... I picked up is is I noticed yes I, I do talk to a lot of different beings that are um, at, at, in a different dimension and the lacking thing is a name so it's more of a vibration I mean they, there might be a noise to them there might be a clicking to them but it's a vibration and it's a frequency it's not a name so it's mostly with the humans, the departed humans that have trouble with the name. That's like the first thing that goes is the name because they no longer utilize it. They don't utilize the labels because everything has a frequency. And that's the best way that I can explain it right now until, you know, I get more information than I can <laughs> explain it even more clear. But for right now, where we're at, we just we utilize the tools that work for us and um, we're in a system that we we need to change I mean we're really really in the belly of, of the beast we're in a yucky place but we have to realize that we can transmute it and we can make things beautiful things don't need to be dirty and yucky we can transform them we can transmute them we can change the system from within and we can do a darn good job of it absolutely so i hope you guys got something out of this again it's it's nothing to be feared it's actually something that's that's awesome because after this energy uh hits us then you know we're we're out of reach as long as we've done all the right things stayed out of the system and this is why the system's trying to weigh people down they're trying to weigh people down they're trying to control people's frequencies so that when this energetic wave hits that they won't be able to ascend up. They really want to put on the cement boots, the lead boots, the graphene oxide boots. Uh, you know, this is all about encapsulating and capturing your soul. Literally, they want to keep your soul because they are, are beings that, again, are, have lost their source spark. When we're talking about, you know, the real top of the pyramid and and the AI that controls the the interdimensional reptilian beings we know as the Draco, which they created, but then enslaved them. They're they just serve the Draco. The Draco just served this AI, and they've lost their own uh, source spark. So they got nowhere to go. They're stuck, and they want to keep us with them. But this is is the ticket to uh, the higher densities where they can't see us, but we could see them. It's not about what you're going to lose. It's about what you're going to gain. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.